So I don't know if you know who Alan Greenspan is or was. He was the chairman of the uh, Federal Reserve. He's an Ayn Rand follower. He's a big Ayn Rander. So his economics have always been screwed up. He's always been wrong about everything. So he's part of that neoliberal, neoconservative kind of look of free markets and who cares about workers and who cares about anything and th all that stuff. Uh, let's find poor, more desperate people in poor, more desperate countries to make our stuff for us, and then we'll ship them back in. And rich people will make money, and everybody else goes to this. That's the, the race to the bottom. That's kind of so. He, he's a lot, a lot of more stuff wrong with. Uh, he's a supply sider, you know, the, all the whole deal. Bernie Sanders got a hold of him one time. Uh, he was uh, on the House Financial Services Committee, and Alan Greenspan came in front of their committee, and Alan Greenspan uh, said this stuff to him. Uh, Mr. Greenspan, I have long been concerned that you are way out of touch with the needs of the middle class and working families of our country, that you see your major function in your position as the need to represent the wealthy and large corporations. And I must tell you that your testimony today only cons confirms all of my suspicions. And I urge you, and I mean this seriously, because you're an honest person. I, th I think you just don't know what's going on in the real world. And I would urge you, come with me to Vermont, meet real people. The country clubs and the cocktail parties are not real America. The millionaires and billionaires are the exception to the rule. You talk about an improving economy while we have lost three million private sector jobs in the last two years. Long-term unemployment has more than tripled. Unemployment is higher than it has been since 1994. We have a $4 trillion national debt. 1.4 million Americans have lost their health insurance. Millions of seniors can't afford prescription drugs. Middle-class families can't send their kids to college because they don't have the money to do that. Bankruptcy, bankruptcy cases have increased by a record-breaking 23%. Business investment is at its lowest level in more than 50 years. CEOs make more than 500 times of what their workers make. The middle class is shrinking. We have the greatest gap between the rich and the poor of any industrialized nation. And this is an economy that is improving. I hate to see what would happen if our economy was sinking. Now, today, you may not have known this. I suspect that you don't. But you have insulted tens of millions of American workers. You have defended over the years, among other things, the abolition of the minimum wage, one of your policies, and giving huge tax breaks to billionaires. So that's the guy who was running our monetary policy. He was against the minimum wage for tax breaks for, for the wealthy. And he, he ran the Federal Reserve from 1987 to 2006. He's on the Federal Reserve Board, Alan Greenspan. And so you wonder why things are screwed up. So he was in charge of the Fed through the whole Clinton 90s, all that deregulation of Wall Street, all that, all BS, all that stuff that wrecked our economy, an economy that FDR set the template down for to be a stable and boring banking system. So here, here's more. But today you reached a new low, I think, by suggesting that manufacturing in America doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the product is produced. We lost two million manufacturing jobs in the last two years alone, 10% of our workforce. Walmart has replaced General Motors as the major employer in America, paying people starvation wages rather than living wages, and all of that does not matter to you, doesn't matter. If it's produced in China, where workers are making 30 cents an hour, or produced in Vermont, where workers can make 20 bucks an hour, it doesn't matter. You have told the American people that you support a trade policy which is selling them out, only working for the CEOs who can take our plants to China, Mexico, and India. You insulted Mr. Castle. Mr. Castle, a few moments ago, a good Republican, told you that we're seeing not only the decline of manufacturing jobs, but white-collar information technology jobs. Forrester Research says that over the next 15 years, 3.3 million U.S. service industry jobs and 136 billion in wages will move offshore to India, Russia, China, and the Philippines. Does any of this matter to you? 
do you give one whit of concern to the middle class and working families of this country? So the answer to that question wow. is no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Because he's, again, millionaire, hangs out with billionaires completely. Never, I'm sure he never has to ride the subway. I'm sure he never has to worry about, should I go see the doctor or will the copay, copay be too high? Ah, I got to get an MRI. My insurance won't cut. He doesn't have to worry about that stuff. Oh, my kid can't afford to go to college. He doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff. He's super wealthy, super, super wealthy. He's out of touch. And just like Bernie said, does any of that matter to you that you're wrecking your economic policies are wrecking the lives of working people in America? No, he doesn't. Here's what he here's what here's what he says. Yeah, I, my question. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I really don't understand what Sanders is saying. Is he talking about unicorns? Here? Fairy dust. It's fairy dust and unicorns. Fairy dust and unicorns. And secondly, why is a, a young Bill Gates uh, sitting behind him? No right. Kidding. No kidding. That's right. Exactly I don't get I that. Thinking. I know. Okay. Here we go. Congressman, we have the highest standard of living. So right away, he just ignores everything Bernie just said. He ignores, we've got the high, we're doing great. All that stuff Bernie just said, he just dismisses it. But you know, Jimmy, when he says we have the highest standard of living, he's talking about him and his wife. Right, I think that's what he means, him and Andrea Mitchell. (laughs) So here we go. Let me me back it up a little bit so we can get a running start on him saying this stupid stuff and watch Bernie slap him back down. Of living in the world. No, we do not. You go to Scandinavia and you will find that people have a much higher standard of living in terms for of education, health care, and decent paying jobs. Okay. Wrong, may Mr. Greenspan. May I answer your question? You sure may. Thank you. <laughs> for a major industrial country, we have created the most advanced technologies, the highest standard of living for a country of our size. Oh, now he's of our size. Oh, of our size. You mean the richest country the face of the earth have ever seen? You mean that? You mean of our size. But there's other countries that are much better, higher standard of living than us, right? That's what you mean? Because there are countries with a much higher... Oh, yes. In fact, there's countries with much greater health care outcomes than other In fact, we're 38th in health care outcomes. You mean that? You mean that kind of technology that we've, we've invented a way to screw our own people out of health care that the rest of the world gets? You mean that kind of technology? So that's Alan Greenspan for you. That's who Alan Greenspan is. And that that was in the early 2000s. I'm going to double check this, but I think that might have been in 2003 that Bernie Sanders was on the case. He was on the case back then. Alan Greenspan head up his ass. His head so far up the up up his ass. He's going to bump into Chris Christie. <laughs> that's somebody else's joke. I don't even know why I said it. I remember uh, working on the Daily Show. Don't mean to drop uh, a name, uh-huh. but uh, every time CNB, every time Alan Greenspan would be uh, addressing the Federal Reserve or Congress or whatever, they would CNBC would focus on his briefcase, and they would <laughs> speculate on the size or how the heft of his briefcase that he was he would carry, uh, whether or not the inter- he was going to raise the inter- interest rate or not. Oh, so that okay, and that's that. This is these are the people who uh, we all listen to. This guy's an idiot. Alan Greenspan's an idiot. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. He, in fact, and by the way, he came back to Congress five years later after Bernie gave him this dressing down, and after he smugly said, "We have the high." He's smiling through the whole smug. What a smug prick. Because he knows he'll never have to face the, face, face the consequences of his horrible economic policies. He doesn't care that in five years the whole economy is going to completely collapse. The biggest economic meltdown since the Great Depression. And it's because of his economic. He doesn't care. It's not going to touch him. You think about, He's still going to go to the White House. He's still going to go ha- have Vichy Suaz on uh, uh, Martha's Vineyard. He's still going to go to all the parties where everybody thinks Tucker Carlson's funny. He's still going to. Nothing's never going to bother him. He's still going to. And dry, fly first class. He's going to stay in five star hotel. None of this is ever, ever, ever going to affect him. That's why he can sit there and smile because none of it, just like Bernie says, is under this matter to you. No, it doesn't matter to you because these are all just ideas that he scribbles on pieces of paper. Who gives it? Because who cares? Ayn Rand. Who cares? Ayn Rand. He's a follower of Ayn Rand. You know, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Selfishness is good and government socialism is bad, except when Ayn Rand died, she took Medicare and Social Security. That's who these people are. Ayn Rand, they're phony, sellout hypocrites, and they're wrong about everything. So that is Alan Greenspan. He came back to Congress five years later, and guess what he said five years later? Guess what he said five years later? Guess what he said? 
view is yes, I found a flaw. I don't know how significant or permanent it is, but I've been very distressed by that fact. But if I may, may I just finish an answer to the, the question previously? You, you found a flaw in a the flaw, reality? A flaw in the model that I perceived is the critical functioning structure that defines how the world works, so to speak. In other words, you found that your, your view of the world, your ideology, was not right. It was that, not that working. Is, it had a, like, precisely. No, I, that's precisely the reason mm -hmm. I was shocked, because I had been going for 40 years or more with very considerable evidence that it was working exceptionally well. Uh, oh, my he, God. He, he's talking about uh, Ayn Rand. There. He's talking about Seriously. Ayn Rand. Yeah. 40 years I've been following Ayn Rand's theory of selfishness is good, socialism is bad, and uh, any kind of controls on capitalism, any kind of regular, it's bad. That's also bad. And money's always right, and more money to rich people is always good. And if, if poor people are poor, it's because they're not working hard enough. All that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. He came back. Yeah, it turns out um, I was wrong about everything my whole life. Our whole ideology is completely flawed, and we've screwed over people. And yeah, we created the biggest economic screw over and wiped out people's pensions. And but guess who didn't hurt? It didn't hurt me, and it didn't hurt my buddies on Wall Street because we stuffed our pockets when it crashed anyway. It didn't matter if the market goes up, we stuff our pockets. Market goes down, we stuff. It doesn't matter. We win. We're always winning because we run the government and it's a plutocracy. I'm not here to serve the people as the Fed chairman. I'm here to serve the bankers. I'm here to serve the people with the money. That's what this is. That's what all this, that, and this is why we need a revolution. This is why. This is what's wrong. Why do I bring this up? Why do I play a clip from Bernie from the early 2000s and then another one from Alan Greenspan five years later? Him doing his BS mea culpa. Boy, he wasn't so smug there, was he? Wasn't so smug when he had to admit, yeah, my, com my complete entire ideology, turns out it's bullshit. Turns out um, those liberals were right. Turns out Ralph Nader was right. Turns out Bernie Sanders is right. Turns out, yeah, those guys were right. It turns out Robert Reich is right. Ah, dad, damn it. Turns out the guys at Jimmy Dore Show are right. Ah, and I was fucking wrong. I was so wrong that even a jagoff comedian could see that he was wrong. And he knew he was wrong, and now he has to admit it. So why do I bring this up?